ओके सो नाउ दैट वी हैव डन रीजनेबली इलेबरेट इंट्रोडक्शन राइट स्पैनिंग ओवर फ्यू लेक्चर्स इट इज टाइम दैट वी जंप इन टू द टॉपिक्स बट बिफोर एस ए वॉन्ट अर्लियर we will not try to jump into a, a specific modality but before we do that we need to orient ourselves actually do some quick review of some concepts and uh, recall that uh, we said each of the modality that we will cover can be actually treated as a, a separate module so after the introduction right i said you could actually go take a particular modality and then complete that as well right it will be self contained but before we do that this part of going over the uh, tools the the concept of how we are going to organize each of the different medical imaging system in the same format right we talked about physics instrumentation and then recon so here we are going to re- quickly review how we see the uh imaging system from a signals and systems point of view which kind of forces us to kind of brush up i i i'm using the term brush up because signals and systems you would have encountered by this time if you are in any typical engineering program right you would have encountered signals and systems um at you know third semester fifth semester uh second semester depending on uh, which you know which uh, institute you are attending so the point is you probably know but then if you already know if it is such a you know a basic material why even do a review right you are supposed to review it by yourself but that is not the case because although you know uh, we are going to talk about images so there is an additional dimension that is coming into picture even though mathematically it may uh, seem straight forward i think it 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 could do you good to get a feel for it again and uh, i will try to prod and make you uh, you know stretch your understanding of your 1d to 2d okay so this is in that context going to be a review that means i'm not going to jump in and do all the proofs and you know, state the theorems like we do in the uh signals and systems when we introduce the topic uh, so that part i leave it to you that you should be able to go over it. okay so how do we how do we uh start right so what is that overview right what is it that i'm telling about having a a a, a template right having a, a structure to our discussion here we'll central to our discussion is going to be medical imaging systems i said so oh, it's a imaging system that is central and uh, let's get the easy ones out oh you what do you expect a imaging system to do it is going to give you an output right which typically we know is a output image is what we call this much is straight forward at least without much the moment you thought about the course title right medical imaging system biomedical imaging systems this is something that you would have made up your mind oh you know i have seen these scanners so these are the medical imaging system i know the output images that much is fine but our interest is not merely taking the output image and doing some processing or saying okay if this is the scanner this is the output image you are going to get that is not our objective we want to understand this system right in the context of okay i get this image but what does this image mean right in the context of what is going into the system so you have a input side so you have an input so we are going to treat the imaging system as something that takes input of some parameters remember that's the point that we were trying to uh, articulate in the introduction as well what is it that you want to see inside the body right some parameter so that has meaning that has uh, a physical sense that is related to underlying biological process right so we have spatial distribution of underlying or inherent signal so that is the signal that we are talking so 
it is not x ray or it is not you know ultrasound pulse what is the input think about i said 3d object let's be little more courteous so it's not 3d object we are talking about human beings so what do we mean by spatial distribution of underlying or inherent signal that means right i am sitting here i am human being so if you take uh, your camera as a imaging system the output of which is what probably you are seeing on the screen right so the idea is i am a source i am a 3d distribution of how light is the, the ability to reflect certain color of visible spectrum right so maybe here the color of the shirt that is sending out some color which comes out as uh send out a wavelength that is corresponding to pink right or my hair right that is you have black and no brown skin so you have the wavelengths that come out that capture but notice all of this it's surface so you are perceiving it your vision is a imaging system right in in, in for interpretation purpose so you are seeing me on the screen and that goes into your eyes and you you perceive me right but we are interested in imaging system right not not the human imaging system not the eye vision and stuff we are interested in the imaging system how how close it captures so this is output is nothing but a estimate of the input so if you are seeing me on screen that is an estimate of how i would look in light so this camera system is capturing me so i am the input output is what you see so the output should be as close as possible to input right so in the context of medical imaging system right what is going to be your input ah it depends on we have multi parameters right so i am not what you perceive right now who i am on the screen so if it is a ultrasound imaging system because you are perceiving me through your vision system which can take inputs in the visible range whereas the uh, if it is an you know ct which is a x ray based imaging system it is going to look at me as what is it going to look at me oh i am just a 3d distribution of the materials attenuation coefficient how much can it attenuate the x ray energy that is coming in that ability that is the property that is what i am a distribution of that so if x ray system right x ray imaging system uh, imaging system that uses x ray to probe the tissue that is going to look at me as a 3d distribution of a material whose attenuation coefficient is going to determine how the imaging system is going to perceive me right if it is going to be um, ultrasound imaging system it is going to look at me as a distribution of acoustic interferences right acoustic uh, scatterers like we talked about mountains right <laughs> giving echoes so it, that is going to just see me as a water body with several interfaces that can reflect the sound back if it is going to be a mri system it is going to look at me as of the other things it is going to just look at me as a water body i am i have hydrogen h2o so it is going to just look at how what is the density of hydrogen right that is distributed across the, my body so it's not going to see me as a skin or the color that you are seeing me right that is optical uh, property whereas it is going to see me as a the mri is going to see me as a, a a 3d of hydrogen atoms right proton so what is the density is going to determine how the uh, imaging system mri is going to capture me of course the output there should be or better be related right closely resemble the underlying thing because you are going to make a diagnosis or whatever based on the output image 
so you're going to say oh there is lot of density here that is abnormal so it better correlate with actual 3d distribution at that location there if there is some abnormality the output estimate should correspond to the in input right so it's very intricate so you cannot comment right if you i shouldn't say you cannot comment if you have to make a, a very good use of the output image or you want the doctors to be really making uh, 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 very reliable diagnosis or whatever uh, based on the output image this output image should be as close as possible because this is an estimate possible to the underlying ground truth so object of our imaging system is to faithfully do whatever faithfully get an estimate that is corresponding to the underlying ground truth so what we will do now this is the big picture so we need to quickly run through what is signal what is system are there some uh, uh, signals interesting signals of interest that irrespective of the modality we need to you know brush up like mathematical concepts so we will start doing that so first we will start with the signals review and then we will go to systems okay so in that case let's move on signals so what comes to your mind when you say signal so this is something that uh, uh, given that i told this is going to be a kind of a review i would like for you to think loud when you watch the uh, lecture just don't wait for listening to the lecture right i want you to spend that time think about what you know already so when we say signals what comes to your mind right what is it that it, what rings a bell what is a signal oh it's nothing but a mathematical function of one or more independent variables and somehow that signal is going to can be used as a uh, uh, you know it's a mathematical form right so it's it's kind of a model that better have some is better represent or model or correspond or capture something physical right that's when uh, uh, it becomes interesting so signal is a mathematical function of one or more independent variables having said that if that is a broad concept that comes to mind so what are the different categories that we can broadly classify these three signals right so again you probably know it so i just uh, encourage you to think before i say so three categories what could it be think ah we have seen maybe something is continuous what is continuous ah signal is continuous what do you, what does he mean by continuous why is he asking this question what is continuous okay okay i think you got the point the idea is if you have continuous that means it's a function we defined already the signal right it is nothing but a function of a independent variables at range over a continuum of values that is the key so the so you have the independent variable right it is a f of t or so typically i'm i'm using one dimensional if you had done most of the physical in, uh, variable that you would have used this time right so you would have seen about s of t or x of t or uh, th that is something that the t is what usually you start when we do uh, 1d especially in a course like signals and system so I, i think you are familiar with that so the t is a continuum right that is what it means by a uh, continuous function however in our case what are we interested in 1d i mean even though mathematically it is it can be any one independent variable you are probably more comfortable with time as your uh, uh, variable right so now we are interested in 2d signals or 3d signals right so let's take 2d signals what do we mean by that oh that means you have a a function that is having 
two independent variables okay and those are continuous or, or they range over a, a continuum so in our case what is the uh, 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 thing that comes to your mind so quickly recall some of the introduction we did on different modalities right what you will notice is say for example if you take uh, x ray right just just uh, radiography so what do you what are the axis the one that easily comes to your mind oh i am a distribution of mu right attenuation coefficient to x ray and i have a length height width so my variables are in length dimension and it is continuous right so i could say that oh the chest x ray that we did in there you see that we have the f of x comma y right we typically uh, write function in terms of its variable so in one dimension we typically write x of t or y of t saying t is your time but here what we covered already x and y axis which 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 are spatial right which are in length scales so f of x comma y this x and y right or the or the length scale so that is a continuous variable so you will start to see that uh, uh, inherently most things right which is having physical uh, which is capturing the physical world is going to be continuous so the, like how time we use for one dimension so a space is, you know is also going to be continuous so that much is straight forward so next is discrete so then you will quickly wonder oh now that you told what is continuous we know what is discrete right we we have it ranges over discrete values so immediately what we think of is from probably our one dimensional um, background oh i know he is talking about instead of uh, s of t or x of t we know it is s of you know discretized n delta t so at different locations it is there so he is talking about analog to dis digital conversion after that we get discretized so the t is now discrete at delta t time right find that is artificially done because in 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 live you have you know physically you have continuous variable if you say t is continuum but you are making the measurements at discrete interval so that is fine but here uh, so so the concept is uh, similar right so instead of doing it in one axis if you do it in two axis then that is discrete that much is fine but what we want to um, relate to is within the context of imaging system can you think of something from what we have covered so far something where you expect the underlying signal also to be at discrete or or at you know uh, discretized or take a, a range in of discrete values probably we mentioned this you know the concept of radioactivity i mean right we we said in nuclear medicine so i said you take some radio tracer and it is decaying right so the radio tracer is when it is decaying you count how many photons gamma photons come out and then you say that's the radioactivity and that is dependent on the wherever the physiology right wherever activity takes place uh, you can have the radio tracer go there so the concentration will tell you that that is high activity or low activity i, I think we i did really uh, mention it so in that context if you see if you recall we, we maybe at uh, uh, high school physics or something you would have when you have radioactivity you are talking about some concept called decay half life right so you see half life is this every half life is one the radioactivity takes place so that is something that is inherently discrete in nature okay so with respect to 2d yes your concept of extending 1d to 2d of discretizing the axis is fine i mean I, that is fine but there are uh, uh signals of interest which are inherently 
discrete in nature okay uh so third category could be well you have continuous you have discrete what could be uh the third one a combination of both right so from a explanation point of view it is it is just merely completing right i have continuous i can i have discrete so i can have a combination of these two right a uh, functions so you have some uh, variables that are continuous some that are discrete okay is it just completing for the sake of completeness or can you think about a scenario or the signals that you are going to deal with the imaging systems where you would probably encounter this so again i'm not asking you to jump into the details because that is what we will do later but just from introduction because you have seen different images i have introduced certain terminologies right just based on that you should try to really challenge yourself to see can i find some examples from what he has taught earlier what he has discussed earlier what he has shown earlier so yes so mixed means definition wise it's fine some is continuous some is discrete but a vivid example that you will end up dealing right is going to be for example compute x ray tom- x ray ct right we we used that in fact i remember we we covered projection we covered tomography right go look back those areas you will realize that uh, what is the idea in, in tomography oh i take i take projections from different views right remember i was using the cell phone saying one is width one is height depends on the orientation and in tomography you get collection of different projections from different views and then you recompute and get the 3d slice right that is what we talked about so now do you get the clue oh one is projection is going to be length scale remember we said okay i drew a, a circle and i said if you project you are going to get a line length scale right so you are going to do this i i i think i drew some eyes like this so what happens if I, this is one view right this is a projection of the circle here what happens if i view from here right oh whatever angle that is so there also i'm going to get a line right a circular disk if you see you project you're going to get a line you're not going to see the change of line from front to back okay so now you get the idea the length scale is going to be nah, it's a continuous you may choose to pick values wherever but this variable whatever you are going to measure if i this is the signal if i'm going to measure the signal and mathematically write it i'm going to call this say sum f of l right comma i have to have some coordinates defined so that if this is 0 degree this is some other degree so i can have some theta so i can have a reference coordinate so i could still do a regular coordinate system and say oh this is 0 uh, degree when i view from here when i view from there maybe i am moving 30 degree clockwise right so i could have some theta so i can represent the collection of these projections right that is my signal as a combination of a continuous variable and discrete variable because i am picking right i am picking locations i am getting views i can have fine stepping or not but the point is you are collecting from different views finite number of different views inherently so your signal that you obtain is going to be a combination of continuous and discrete of course you, then you use the signal process the signal create a image okay so that is 
something of interest so now uh of course i just uh, was excited and i wrote on top of this never mind you should be able to see the what we want to do is okay having talked about uh, signals and uh, having talked about uh, uh, f of x y right we are just going to call it as f of x comma y a function that has two independent variables x and y represents the two spatial directions so now the question is if i have this how do i represent it right how do i visualize this okay so um simple things again 1d you probably no right i mean you should know for example let's take any simple uh function one dimension and see if you plot it right how do you represent it or visualize it so just for sake of continuity right before we get into the 2d ffx comma y if i tell that uh, you have f of uh, x is equal to sin x right this is a function this is a signal so how do you represent it how do you visualize it ah you will be able to quickly do oh, this is no brainer right i will have the axis i will plot x i will have no magnitude there so i will do it's not ah okay right you are going to so sin 0 is 0 so you're going to have maximum of 1 and then it's going to go to minus 1 so you can you you'll be able to visualize right but then notice i mean this is kind of a um, i i know it's a overbeat but then this is one dimensional but in order to visualize this what did i do i've used the plane of the screen right but plane of the screen is two dimensions why oh because when we defined one dimension we said it is one independent variable and that forms one axis that forms one axis but then the value forms the other axis so when you have one independent variable i am using another dimension so for visualization or representation so this becomes i need a plane 2d to represent or visualize so that means going forward if i have f of x comma y what would you expect how do you represent how do you visualize what do you think okay if we paid attention to this part then quickly we will recall oh that means f of x comma y better have x and y as two axes right and then you have to have a third dimension for the values clear so now f of x comma y if i want to visualize or represent straight forward extension of our understanding of 1d representation leads us to something like this where you have x axis y axis clear x axis y axis and a third axis where you can see the valleys and peaks here so if you were to um, take some cut here for example now this cut is going to be a 1d signal right it is going to be f of y comma at x is equal to some value x1 so this is not varying so this is going to be a 1d variable so if i take that then oh i know how to plot it right this will be my y this will be my y so you are going to have value so if this is 0 for example 
just for right this is if that is zero right this is zero so if i start it's going to have some black is zero for example then i'm going to go up then a lot of fluctuations then there is when i get to there i see black it goes to zero and there's a lot of fluctuation so this is a signal so it's a 1d signal i'm able to plot it this is fine we know so like this you have done right what you visualize f of x comma y you get this so this is actually uh, very important to get this insight because if you are going to get the raw you you get the data and then you have to do the image reconstruction what if you want to do image processing right basically if you go into your workspace right if you are uh, reading the variable f of x comma y this is what you will see this is how it is so you can get a feel for how the signal is varying however if you show this for the end user say you show this to a a, a, a radiologist he will just say what is this you know this is not a typical image i see so he is going to use the term image so you have been very correct in your representation you have done f of x y you have actually plotted it but in imaging systems the output we are expecting to be an image so how do we do that because looking at this you really you cannot i mean you, you when i reveal the image you you will see uh, why this this uh, what you see here as a signal looks weird to the doctor okay so what do so then how do you represent how do you visualize oh we don't worry about plotting we use what is called as pixel element sorry picture element that is your pixel right so we convert this into an image what we do is the third dimension we color code let the maximum value be white minimum value be black right you can have different different schemes uh, of uh, mapping this but so you you essentially encode the third dimension encode as a color code if you do that you still use x and y the third dimension that was coming out right when you plotted instead of that we converted that to a color representation so if you do that this is what you see it's the same f of x comma y it's the same signal it is just that you are visualizing this by color coding the third axis so now you get the point so if it is one dimensional signal you needed two dimensions to show the plot how the signal is varying so if it is going to be two dimensions then you need three dimensions so you can imagine if you have a three dimensional variable three dimensional signal how do you you know uh, visualize that okay so that's a thought exercise i mean you know you can do that so now you get that image is not a big deal x comma y and the third color that much is uh, followable right but this is something that you will appreciate oh we have seen these are you no know, brain scan if you and i can appreciate that clearly the clinical practitioner is going to be very comfortable only with this he is not going to look at this and say oh you are mathematically correct it's same f of x comma y no but but he's not going to make a diagnosis based on that clear so uh, this is fairly straight forward but i i wanted to spend this time because based on my experience i noticed that uh, the small stretch of imagination if you don't appreciate then all the reconstruction and all the things that uh, you when you whenever you use f of x comma y uh, there is no feel there is no intuition there is no appreciation for how this is happening so it becomes just a, a mathematical exercise but if you if you spend this extra 5 10 minutes understanding this which is probably not complicated but uh, i i found this to be uh, helpful from the student feedback okay so so much for the signal then what do we have so we call what is called as picture element so if this is a picture you have picture element that is your pixels okay so after that i won't say anything because you all know what is pixel and um, you know uh, how many pixels is good how many pixels is not good for your application you know you you know that so it has 
relationship to the image quality so that we will cover little later okay fine so f of x comma y so for 1d we know 2d just for extension we need to work also for 3d okay and the reason for that is some of the modalities that we will cover inherently you will have you know i'm going to cover the whole volume so can i just do a a a a a slice so even this slice if you look at it this is saying that this is infinitely thin right everything is on plane of paper you don't have the z direction x and y z is there is no delta z there is no width that's what it's mapped to but in reality we are 3d so there is going to be width so what we will encounter is not picture element we will encounter volume element so when i say volume element you will probably not recognize but if i say volume element is abbreviated as voxel then you might probably start to relate right I've seen voxel and they mri for example right there you you start to uh, talk about voxels because it's all volume elements that you're going to play with so that means this is a 3d object i have a 2d slice which is going to be my image so this is your pixel so when you have a height right or slice thickness to it then it becomes a volume a surface area times height or depth is going to be a volume okay so we are going to call this now as voxel and um, several of these slices if you stack then you can cover the 3d so we will use volume elements when we are doing uh, 3d and uh, when you are doing imaging typically even though it's the same value within this thickness you are going to project this on plane of paper that means you are saying you are collapsing the depth information you are projecting on plane of paper so it becomes a a 2d so we call it image and it's called picture element pixel okay so let us quickly move on so we now got a hang of what signal means and how we represent or visualize two dimensional signals and of course three dimensional signals as well right here so now it is uh, in order for us to proceed quickly to uh, uh, revise refresh ourselves on some typical signals of interest that you will encounter several times okay so what is what are the specific signals that we are going to encounter here we are going to talk about point impulse comb and sampling function line impulse and few other functions like rect and sinc of course relationship between exponential and sinusoidal signals i mean this is just scratching the surface the idea is these are all unique this by by covering these we should be able to address 99% of the introductory material that we have however if you are going to work on any particular signal processing aspect more perhaps you you are advised to explore this further right but uh, that is not intended for this course for this uh, audience so similarly we'll run through you have 1d right one dimensional signal i already plotted a sinusoid so you know what it looks so if you have point impulse right what is 1d point impulse does anything have you seen point impulse in when you covered 1d no what 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 do we mean by that i mean you know i we probably have heard um, impulse right so you would, at the origin you would have seen something like this a delta function direct delta impulse function you would have heard that what is point impulse same concept instead of instead of 1d here right so for example this was 1d at t equal to 0 you have everything packed so that is your impulse direct delta whatever you want right so point is going to be when i have two dimensions 
at the origin right at the origin that is a point so point impulse impulse is same right it has all the energy at that location zero width your point impulse should mean similar just that it doesn't have any thing on x or y say x and y so it doesn't have all the energy is plucked at the origin of x comma y so point impulse so we can 1d you are familiar you would have heard about delta function so delta of x is 0 when x is not equal to 0 so that means everything is packed only at 0 outside 0 you don't have any value it's all zeros that's its definition so the uniqueness of this is hardly uh, this function is used by itself right mostly it gets its meaning or the way it is do uh, way it gets utilized is delta x combines with some other function it kind of combines so here it is multiplied with some arbitrary function f of x so delta x multiplied with f of x and then the energy that is integrated over that sum right that comes out to be f of 0 that means the function's value this is a any function f of x when it is combined with a, a delta of x right then you can essentially pick this f of 0 that means the function f of x whatever value it has at 0 can be picked out right because of this delta function so delta function is unique in that sense that it is not by itself it is defined but it is interesting because it can be used with other signals to extract pull out the value of that arbitrary function wherever delta function exists okay so that is your 1d so you can extend the same concept to 2, 2d as well so that means it is defined only at origin right at 0 comma 0 by itself it doesn't you know it's not uh, it's not utilized but then it combines here right a two dimensional signal instead of f of x here it is f of x comma y and you will notice quickly this can be used f of x comma y means it is pulling out f of x comma y's value at 0 comma 0 so because delta function is defined point impulse is defined at 0 comma 0 the function f of x comma y any function f of x comma y its value at 0 comma 0 can be pulled out wow this is fantastic right why because f of x comma y is a two dimensional in space it can have any value anywhere what if i want to know the f of evaluate that f of x comma y at particular location right so I want to locate uh, f of x comma y I want to know at this location this location is some offset from here I know this value now right f of 0 comma 0 using the delta function and integrating it what if I want to know a value here oh I can use my delta function to pick how do I do that oh I have delta function at x comma y right it is like this in the space now if I can shift it right so I can shift it by some epsilon comma eta then your delta function is shifted right x minus epsilon y minus eta so recall the definition of the point impulse you will quickly see this operation f of x comma y is f of x comma y is existent over the space but my delta function is existent only when its argument is 0 that means when x minus epsilon equal to 0 or x is equal to epsilon y is equal to eta only there you have delta non zero that means only there I can get my function right so that is your shifting property so you can basically use shifted version of your delta functions to pull out values from f of x comma y at those locations right this is sifting property okay so as we go further i think this is all 1d equivalent so you know if you had already appreciated 1d powerfulness of your delta functions 
delay and whatever you are pulling, especially in the linear systems concept, this is a straightforward extension. Okay, so you can move your delta function, move your delta function, and then pick at f of x comma y. Though the value of f of x comma y at this location can be pulled out using the shifted delta function point impulse. Okay, so other other properties like scaling or even function are uh, straightforward extension. So if you have uh, uh, you know we had only x and y before, but if you scale the axis right, if you do a x and b y, then you will get delta of x comma y. You will get this here. So it is a scaling property. So if you scale this axis here, the value gets shift uh, scaled. Okay. So this is your axis scaling. This is your amplitude. So if you change here, if you scale here, it gets divided by this value, right? So as to keep the, the energy constant. So the idea is this is your scaling property. This is what is called as even function. Again, this is you can even though it's listed separately, this is nothing but what happens if your A and B are is equal to minus one, right? A equal to B equal to minus one would essentially be delta of minus X comma minus Y which will be 1 by 1 of delta x. So it's just a derivative, right? So, but it is specific, it's called as even function. So those things are straight carry forward from your 1D signals that you probably know, nothing much. So let's quickly move to the, the another important uh, idea of line impulse. Line impulse, okay, you now have the value of point impulse, right? Point impulse is very immensely useful. You will look at it uh, from uh, image quality perspective eventually, right? If, if you have an ideal point at zero and if your imaging system is going to take, so I have an ideal point, okay? This is your ideal. And then the imaging system is going to take this point and is going to show this point, right? The objective is your output image is an estimate of ideal input but because the, of the imaging systems point right this is a point impulse systems response to this so your point spread function you will see that this is bigger one so there will be blurring okay so it is related to resolution blurring image quality so that because so it's a very important point impulse is an important concept it's an important mathematical operator so why then line impulse similar so now, instead of just using point, if I want to characterize the imaging system, I could use calibrated way to do it. And it might be beneficial some say, instead of making a, a point, if you have to make a 3D object, that means I'm going to talk about a sphere. Instead of making a very small sphere, right? Infinitesimally small sphere and placing it and trying to image, which may be challenging, it may be easier to have line targets, a wire with different dimensions. So, so in calibrations, line targets become very useful and therefore to mathematically represent that we need to have line impulses so first we write right you can have line impulse what does it mean oh that means i have a delta function that exists only along the line that is non-zero only along the line so i have delta of here l is equal to x cos theta plus y sin theta so that means where is this line? Oh, this line is in space, x comma y space, right? So it has some angle, the norm to this line from the origin makes an angle theta and the length along the direction of the norm, right, is L. So now you can look at, write a line in this space x comma y with different orientation and at different locations from the origin okay so this is your line impulse so immediately when you do that you can think about different functions so comb function what is a comb function you know the comb that we use how does it look oh it has a no it, it is usually a comb you have a, a line and then you have teeth 
right that is your comp so comp function should similarly have that means it is mimicking that so you have a line but it has values right the spikes only at special locations so comp of x comma y is nothing but a collection of this at different offsets from m and n different locations m and n right x comma y plane at locations of m and n you are moving this delta only there it is there so if you visualize that it will look like a comb and uh, again why is this important we already talked about using this uh, delta functions to pick values of the continuous function so naturally that means you can wish envision if there are going to be uh, spikes right delta function here like that m comma n then maybe i could you and i pick off from f of x comma y if i pick off values only at discrete locations m comma n that means it is equivalent to sampling also so you can view this as a sampling as well delta of x comma y and you are picking samples spaced delta x in the x direction delta y in y direction which is nothing but a collection of delta functions where x right it is defined only x is defined at x minus m delta x meaning whenever this argument goes to zero whenever this argument goes to zero so that means x is equal to m delta x and y is equal to n delta y that's when you have the values that you pick that those are the discrete location so that is your sampling okay so that is why you will kind of use this more and more uh again you could use the same argument you could get this um uh, relationship between sampling function and comb function so you can use this comb function to do sampling so i can uh, take the space out and i can get discrete locations valued at discrete locations so we will stop here and uh, we'll continue the next lecture from this location thank you